in my last class we discussed the operation of a boost converter. We found that for a given value of D and the input voltage VDC, output voltage is higher if the current is discontinuous. Okay. If the inductor current is discontinuous for a given value of D, output voltage is higher than if the current were to be discontinuous. Okay. If it is continuous, output voltage is VDC divided by 1 minus D. Now, if it is discontinuous, now it is going to be a function of beta and we found that this value is the new value, the output voltage when the current is discontinuous is higher than the current were to be continuous. And second point that we discussed was the use of buck as well as a boost converter in the speed control of DC machine. We found that both speed control 0 to rated or the operation in the first quadrant and the regenerative braking feeding energy back to the source is possible by using these two converters buck as well as the boost converters. So two quadrant operation of the DC machine is possible just by using a buck and a boost converter. Recall in the line commutated converter, two quadrant using a two quadrant converter, we had to interchange the armature terminals. We interchange the armature terminals for IA to reverse. Whereas using a DC to DC converter, buck as well as boost, I do not need to interchange the armature terminals. Having studied buck and boost, so there has to be a, a buck and a boost converter, buck boost converter, what is known as a buck boost converter, which is a cascade connection of a buck converter and a boost converter. So here is a buck, buck boost converter, switch S, inductor, diode and this is the output stage. Similar to buck and water, close yes, I am storing the energy in the inductor. See this sort of this feature is similar to a buck and water and this is some sort of a boost converter, okay. Boost converter, stored energy, you pass it through the load using through D, okay. Hence the name buck boost converter. How does it operate? I close S for DT duration where D is the duty cycle. Voltage across the inductor is, is the supply voltage itself. Diode cannot conduct. Okay. So therefore at the output stage capacitor supplies power. See now we have almost this is a a boost converter topology, capacitor supplying power. We never had this sort of a situation in buck converter, buck converter, okay. Whereas I have a switch in the main path of the flow is similar to buck converter, okay. I will open S after some time. So stored energy in the inductor is transferred to the load and diodes are conducting here, this is the circuit, okay. So KVL gives for this loop taking the resistance into account, this is the equation that I get R into IL plus LDI by DT is equal to VDC and KCL at this node is IC, the capacitor current is equal to the load current, okay. So capacitor is discharging here, okay. And similarly here, IL is equal to IC 
plus I naught, I L is equal to C D V naught by D T plus V naught by R, okay. And the circuit equation is L D I by D T plus R into I L plus V naught is equal to 0, plus V naught is equal to 0. Voltage across inductor is minus V naught now, whereas here voltage across inductor is VDC. Okay. By the way, what is the polarity of V naught? What is the polarity of V naught? If you see in the circuit, I have shown the direction in this way because when I open the switch, current starts flowing in this direction. So this terminal is positive this is negative this is negative but then for the source this line is the reference point okay so i cannot have two reference points in one circuit remember you cannot have two reference points in one circuit if i am taking a reference as the negative dc bus so it is a reference point for to measure the voltages at other points So voltage applied to the load is negative, negative is minus V naught is appearing across the load. If I see this waveform on the oscilloscope, this is the ground, this is plus VDC, whereas if I touch this, it is minus V naught, minus V naught, okay, it's minus V naught. So let us find our transfer function by solving these equations, okay. So, this is the voltage equation R into IL plus LDI by DT plus VDC and when I open the switch, this is the KVL. So, if I find out the average values of this equation, here I need to integrate from 0 to DT and this equation I need to integrate from DT to T and if I add, see RIL is there, LDI by DT is there. VDC is present from 0 to DT whereas V0 is present from DT to T. So I will get an equation something like this R into IL, LDI by DT average, V0 is there only from DT to T and VDC is there from 0 to DT. So this is the average, this is the equation giving the average values, okay. Similarly, if I find out the average values here, dv0, cv dv0 is there in both the equations, v0 by r is there in both the equations and il. So average of this plus average of this should be equal to or, or the average value of il from d2 to t. So here is it, d2 to t. At steady state, the di by dt average should be 0, current should start current at t is equal to 0 should be equal to current at t is equal to t, okay. And that is only then I am saying circuit has attained a steady state. Similar is true for the output voltage V0, okay. Kept mini voltage ripple should remain constant over a cycle, okay. So this term is 0, this term is 0. So therefore, R into IL plus 1 minus D into V0 is equal to DVDC and this is the equation giving the load current in terms of the inductor current. V0 by R is average load current, okay. So if solving this, substituting for IL substituting for IL in this equation using these values, I get this equation. So V0 in terms of VDC and the internal resistance of the inductor is given by this, okay. And IL is, is this equation. So if R tends to 0, if I consider inductor to be ideal, I will get a voltage equation which is given by V0 is equal to VDC divided by D1 minus D, okay. And IL is equal to VDC divided by 
r into 1 minus d squared into d okay this equation can also be solved by equating the average voltage across the inductor what we did for buck or the boost converter so if i know the voltage across inductor from 0 to dt and from dt to t i'll equate it and i'll get the transfer function okay it's very simple i don't need to write i don't need to take the value of r into account so here is the equation vdc into t voltage across the inductor uh, during dt is vdc okay and voltage across the inductor when when uh, the switch is open it is minus v naught that is for this duration i will equate it i will equate it and i will get this transfer function okay vdc is the voltage across the inductor when the switch is on and when the switch is off voltage across the inductor is the output voltage okay so this is for a ideal buck boost converter what does it say the magnitude of output voltage v naught is less than the input voltage vdc for d varying from 0 to 0.5 okay so we have a step down action here okay or the buck operation for 0 to 0.5 magnitude of output voltage is less than the input voltage this is nothing but buck operation and from 0.5 to d 0.5 to 1 the magnitude of output voltage is higher than the input voltage so this is nothing but the boost operation okay but then what happens at d is equal to 1 similar to boost converter even in ideal buck boost converter a magnitude of output voltage tends to infinity as d tends to 1 okay i'll repeat similar to boost converter the magnitude of output voltage tends to infinity as d tends to 1 okay see the in the equivalent circuit if you see here okay we had assumed that output voltage remains constant okay v naught is constant and ripple free and we said the v naught is the voltage that is appearing across across the inductor when the switch is open and we equated it equated the voltage across the inductor when the switch is on and when the switch is off we equated and we found that the transfer function is d divided by 1 minus d okay but then what happens at d tends to 1 or has the value of d increases most of the time at the input inductor is charging and at the output capacitor is supplying power so therefore capacitor voltage has to fall and it will fall so the, the very basic assumption that i made saying that output voltage will remain constant is not valid similarly at the input most of the time we are applying a dc voltage to the inductor current increases linearly it will so happen that inductor may saturate okay so whatever that happened in the boost converter for high values of d happens in buck boost also so as d tends to 1 or if you see in the circuit here d tends to 1 output voltage will become zero output voltage will become zero because capacitor is permanently connected across the load and it is discharging and at the input the inductor is permanently connected across the dc supply and it will saturate okay so this we should get from a equation which we have derived taking the resistance into account inductor resistance into account see here this is the equation we derived taking the non idealities of the inductor r by r so if i substitute your d is equal to 1 output voltage becomes zero 
d is equal to 1, output voltage becomes 0. Okay, this is 0. And the inductor current is when d is equal to 1 is Vdc divided by R at steady state. In, so, it is a very high current and which may damage the source or inductor or the switch. Okay, this is what it is. So, last observation that I would need to make is the output voltage is negative with respect to the reference point of the source voltage. Okay. I have taken negative DC negative bus as the reference point. So, output voltage is negative with respect to this line DC line. Okay. And we will it's a non ideal converter. This is the variation when d is equal to 0 output voltage is 0 whereas in boost converter output voltage the ratio of V naught by V d c is equal to 1 buck converter when d is equal to 0 output voltage is also 0 d into V d c it starts increasing tends to infinity for ideal buck boost at d is equal to 0 0.5 the ratio is 1 similar to boost the magnitude of V naught reaches a peak and it comes down and d is equal to 1 it is equal to 0. So, what is the value of d for which the magnitude reaches magnitude of output reaches a peak we need to differentiate the voltage equation with respect to d. Okay. So, so, d max is found to be this which is relatively bit complicated compared to compared to the boost converter. Okay. This is a D max and V naught max is this value, V naught max is this value. Okay. V naught max. Now, let us draw the various waveforms. I had drawn both continuous and discontinuous cases for buck as well as boost. For buck boost I will draw only for continuous current. I encourage you people to go back and draw it for a discontinuous case. Okay. So, what happens when I close S voltage across the inductor is V d c current increases linearly. So, when I close S if you see here the circuit whatever the current that was flowing through the diode starts flowing through S. Okay. So, this is the inductor current I L, this path or dur during this period diode is on. So, this is the current that is flowing through the diode. At this instant we have turned on the switch. So, whatever that current that was flowing through the diode starts flowing through the switch. Okay. This is also equal to the source current waveform, this is also the source current waveform. When switch is on, source supplies power, when switch is off there is no current from the source similar to buck, similar to buck. So, this is a buck converter source current waveform. Okay. So, current instantaneously changes, there are abrupt changes in the source current when I turn on as well as when I turn off. Okay. Whereas, this is not the case in the boost converter. The source current waveform looks like this in the boost converter. Okay. Source is always there in the circuit. Okay. So, I have a source current waveform which is similar to the buck converter. So, when I open S, whatever the, the current that is flowing through the inductor starts flowing through the load and the diode. Okay. So, diode this is a diode current and at this point there is abrupt change because we have turned on the switch. Okay. How does the output voltage varies or how does the capacitor current waveform look like? I told you this is similar to a boost operation, boost operation okay. only capacitor supplies power. This sort of thing does did not take place or does not take place in buck converter. Okay. 
the conductor. Inductor is always there with the with the output capacitor and the load, even when the switch is open as well as when the switch is closed. Okay. So when the switch is closed, diode is reverse biased or diode cannot conduct. Capacitor supplies power. We are assumed that V naught remains constant, even if V naught changes over a very narrow band v not by r remains approximately constant okay so i am assuming that load current is constant so the capacitor discharges so this is the capacitor current constant kcl gives here that i not is equal to minus ic so this is a capacitor current discharges at a constant rate therefore capacitor voltage output voltage varies or decreases linearly here okay i have opened the switch the inductor current starts flowing through capacitor and load okay kcl at this point gives il is equal to ic plus i not and i am assuming whatever that assumption that i made while drawing the waveform in the case of boost converter i said that in the entire on period of the switch capacitor is discharging okay so i'll assume that when the switch is opened or during the off period of the switch capacitor is charging in other words in other words just prior to closing s inductor current is higher than i not i'll repeat just prior to clo closing s inductor current is higher than i not if inductor current is higher than i not the remaining current has to go through has to go through the capacitor capacitor continuously charging so so if you see here capacitor current is positive at this point because inductor current il is higher than i not okay i'm just assuming it need not be true if i only thing i i have to, i need i have to apply only kcl at this point if i know the magnitudes of il ic i i not i assume to be constant i can determine or i can plot ic waveform so I, at this point i'm assuming that il the inductor current is higher than i not so the remaining current has to flow into the capacitor which is positive so at this point i'm turning on s d turns off on capacitor supplying the entire i not mind you capacitor current can change instantaneously okay only capacitor voltage cannot change instantaneously so if i plot v not okay so it is minimum at just prior to opening the switch and this voltage is maximum just prior to closing the switch okay i am assuming that just prior to closing the switch capacitor current is positive only this under this condition it is true mind you okay so at this point il is uh, higher than i not so ic is positive capacitor is charging but immediately when i close the switch ic becomes negative starts discharging so definitely the peak of the capacitor voltage or output voltage occurs just prior to closing the switch okay now what is the voltage rating and voltage rating of the switch and the diode see the circuit when i close the switch what is the cathode potential of the diode when i close s this positive point gets connected to the cathode okay these two are at the same potential so in other words cathode potential with respect to the negative dc bus is vdc anode potential is minus v not 
minus V naught with respect to the negative DC bus. Okay, anode potential is minus V naught. Cathode potential is plus V DC with respect. So voltage across the diode is sum of these two voltages. Okay, plus minus is a voltage at this point, and here is V DC. So mine is a sum of these two voltages that the voltage that the diode should block. Diode should block the sum of these two voltages. And the same voltage appears across the switch when diode starts conducting. See when diode starts conducting, this point is at minus V naught with respect to the negative DC bus. Okay. Whereas this point is at V DC with respect to negative DC bus. So the voltage across S is V DC plus V naught. So the switch has to block the sum of the output voltage and the output and the source voltage. The voltage rating of S and D they are the same and the minimum voltage rating is the sum of the input voltage VDC plus V0. Okay. That is about the buck boost converter. In all three buck, boost and buck boost when I am saying continuous conduction, it implies that, implies that the inductor current is continuous. If it is discontinuous, it implies that inductor current is discontinuous, not the output current, remember. Now I will compare the buck, buck boost and the boost, all three. Just see the source current waveform in all three as well as the load current waveform in all three. What sort of a current source current waveform we had in buck and buck boost? They are same. The source current, there is the instantaneously it has to supply the current that was flowing through the diode. Abrupt change if the current is continuous. Okay. And it comes abruptly to zero when I open the switch in both cases, buck as well as buck boost. There are ab abrupt changes when I close the switch as well as open the switch open the, in the switch current. Okay. What happens in boost? The source current is approximately smooth one. There is a large inductor connected in series with the battery. So I told you yesterday that input stage for a boost converter can be thought of as if it is a current source. We have a voltage source and an inductor, we can combine it and, and we can represent it as a current source. Okay. So we have a current source at the input for a boost, whereas the source current abruptly changes when I open the switch as well as close the switch. So therefore, we require input filters for buck as well as buck boost. What sort of a output stage I have for a buck converter? The output stage of a buck converter, there is always an inductor comes in series with the capacitor and, and R. Inductor is always there. Okay. So I can represent the output stage of a buck converter as a current source. Can re represent it as a current source. Okay. So load current or the capacitor current, it is not constantly discharging or capacitor does not discharge at a constant rate when the switch is opened or closed as in the case of boost converter. In the case of boost converter, what happened or in the case of buck boost converter, both cases, boost as well as buck boost, capacitor was discharging at a constant rate when the switch was closed where that sort of a thing did not happen in the buck converter. Inductor is always present only even when I open the switch or close the switch. So uh, there is a, a step change or capacitor current instantaneously changes there. Let us see in this figure 
This is the source current waveform for a buck converter, the same as the buck boost, whereas the source current waveform for a boost converter is slowly increasing when the switch is closed and slowly decreasing when the switch is opened. But the output current waveform or the capacitor current waveform is capacitor is discharging at a constant rate. Same thing is true here, capacitor is discharging at a constant rate. Okay. Discharge. So definitely if compared to the buck converter, ripple in the output voltage in boost as well as buck booster is higher. I am saying this because capacitor in both the cases is discharging at a constant rate. I will repeat, the ripple in the output voltage will be higher for a buck boost and a boost converter because output capacitor is discharging when the switch is closed at a constant rate. The entire load current is being supplied by the output capacitor. Definitely capacitor has to change, voltage has to change. Whereas this sort of a thing does not happen in a buck converter. Inductor is always present there. So some sort of a current, then some sort of a current source is there in the output stage of a buck converter. Okay. So it is always desirable to have a current source at the input as well as at the output. See, the, uh, since the source current abruptly changing in buck as well as buck boost, I said we require the f input filters and that sort of filter is not required for a buck converter. And I told you that output voltage ripple definitely will be higher in buck boost and buck boost. I will repeat, output voltage ripple is higher in boost and buck boost because capacitor is discharging at a constant rate. Whereas that sort of a thing doesn't happen in buck converter. So can I combine the advantages of boost and advantages of buck? Whereas wherein wherein I have a current source at the input in the boost converter and a current source at the output in buck converter. Okay. So both the current source at the input as well as the output. Can I have a converter wherein have these two features. So in chuck converter, both input as well as output has a current source. So input stage and output stage of a chuck converter is a current source. How does it look? Here is a circuit. Okay. Source, an inductor and a switch. Okay. Okay, uh, inductor and the output stage, inductor and the output stage, okay, as a diode. And I am connecting a capacitor between these two points, okay. It looks complicated, but it is very simple, okay. And it became very popular, very popular, and named after the inventor. How does it work? Close S. What happens when I close S? L1, VDC, S1, sorry S. So this is the stage, okay. The moment I close S, diode this point gets connected to this point, okay. In other words, VC1 appears across D. See, the negative plate is connected to the anode, the positive plate gets connected to the cathode of D because I am shorting this. In other words, VC1 is appearing across the diode in the reverse mode. Therefore, diode is reverse biased, okay. So this point gets connected here and the remaining circuit L2, 
C2 and R. Okay. I am just closing S. There is a short circuit here. VC1 appears across the diode, cannot conduct, and this VC1, this voltage is a forcing function for this part. Okay. I will open S. What happens? The stored energy in the inductor starts flowing through capacitor C1, diode D and back to source. Okay. So, open S, whatever the other current that was flowing through L1 starts flowing through the capacitor on the diode back to source. So, here is the output. When I open the switch, here is the equivalent circuit. What happens? to the load side, current was flowing in this fashion that is I s the source current. So, diode is on, diode is on and this load current I 2 also starts flowing through D 2. Okay. So, at the loss load stage or the at the output stage I have a circuit something like this L 2 C 2 R and D. Okay. Current through D is sum of I 2 as well as I s the source current. Sorry, I should have shown here a switch or oh, I need to I should have shown here D. Okay. So, L 1 C 1 D back to source. Similarly, L 2 this combination D back to source. Okay. Now, before deriving the transfer function, can I see this equivalent circuits and can I use whatever that I have studied so far, those three converters, buck, buck boost and boost and can I derive or can I write down the relationship between VDC capacitor voltage VC1 and output voltage V0. we can by just by inspecting I can write the equations. What are they? What happens at the input stage? I had closed switch S, current started increasing in the inductor, open the switch S, whatever the stored energy in the inductor is transferred to the capacitor C1. Nothing but a buck con boost converter operation. Let me repeat, it is a boost converter operation. I closed S, opened S, whatever the current that was flowing through L1 starts flowing through the capacitor C1. At the input stage, I have a voltage source and an inductor. So, I can represent it the input stage as a current source similar to boost. Voltage source and inductor, I said we can represent it the input stage by a current source. Similarly, here VDC and L1, the inductor, can be thought of as a current source. That current source was flowing through, the value of the current was flowing through S when I closed it and when I opened it, it started flowing through the capacitor C1. Same thing what that had happened in the boost converter. So, therefore, the relationship between VC1 and VDC should be equal to or the same transfer function that we derived for the boost converter should be valid here between V C 1 and V D. The relationship between V C 1 and V D is 1 divided by 1 minus the same as the boost converter. So, therefore, V C 1 is V D C divided by 1 minus D. See the circuit here circuit here. So, it says we close the energy, open S, VC1, same thing. So, relationship between VC1 and VDC is same as, and this is nothing but buck convert, boost converter circuit, this is nothing but boost converter circuit. 
So, V C 1 is equal to V D C divided by 1 minus D. What happens on the secondary side or on the load side? What happens on the load side? Do not you think this is nothing but a buck converter? Buck converter with input as V C 1? When I close yes, input voltage is applied to the inductor as well as the output stage. Okay. Same equivalent circuit that we got when switch is on in the buck converter. When I opened S, diode starts conducting and this is the equivalent circuit. This is nothing but the buck converter. So, we have a relationship between V C 1 and V naught. What is that? V naught is equal to D into V C 1. Okay. Whereas, here we have V C 1 is equal to V D C divided by 1 minus D boost converter a buck converter V naught is equal to D into V C 1. So, therefore, what is the relationship between V D C and V naught? V naught is equal to D into V C 1 and V C 1 is equal to V D C divided by 1 minus D. Therefore, V naught is equal to D divided by 1 minus D into V D C, nothing but a buck boost operation, buck boost operation. Okay. So, transfer function of a cook or a chook converter is the same as that of or the buck boost converter. Again, the output voltage, the polarity is the same as, same as the buck boost converter. Now, we will analyze this circuit taking the resistances of L1 and L2 into account. Now, the process may be a bit tedious, but then very simple equations after all R into I plus L di 1 by dt is equal to V d c. This is the max, this is the terms that come into, they appear in the equation. They, you may or they may appear to be a bit tedious please do not lose patience solve this equation. Okay, now, we will start writing the circuit equations in terms of resistances. S is closed, input is V d c is equal to L 1 d i s by d t plus R 1 into i s. i s is the source current or the switch current and at the, at the load side V c 1 is equal to L 2 d i 2 by d t plus R 2 into I 2 plus V naught and at the, at the output K C L gives I 2 the inductor current I 2 is equal to capacitor current C D V naught by D T plus V naught by R C okay. and, and the entire I 2 is being supplied by the capacitor 1 C 1 V C 1. Okay. So, C 1 D V C 1 by D T is equal to minus I 2. Okay. The entire the inductor current I 2 which is the sum of output current and the capacitor 2 current C 2 current is flowing through L 2 that is I 2 is equal to the rate of change of the capacitor voltage C 1 okay, V C 1 by D T. So, if I represent a load side by a current source of I 2 because there is an inductor coming in series with the output stage, I can assume that or I can say that C 1 is discharging at a constant rate of I 2. Okay. See same thing whatever that happened in a, in a, in a buck converter. 
buck converter the load side we represented or i said we can represent it by a current source so here also if i represent the load side by a current source of i2 that current is being supplied by the capacitor c1 so we can say that c2 is discharging at a constant rate current that is flowing is i2 okay for 0 to dt when the switch is closed what happens when i open the switch switch is open whatever the current that is flowing through l1 starts flowing through c1 i said the input stage of a cook converter the vdc in series with l1 can be represented by a current source of is similar to the boost converter now that entire current source current of current the value of the current source is flowing through the capacitor c1 in other words capacitor is charging at a constant rate current that is flowing is constant and that is at is i am neglecting the ripple please okay so vc1 increases when the switch is off in other words capacitor c1 is charging when the switch is off and i open the switch capacitor c1 starts charging it was supplying i2 constant current when the switch was closed the switch was closed so therefore from 0 to dt vc1 is decreasing linearly because i assume that current that is flowing out of out of c1 is i2 and from dt to t capacitor voltage vc1 is increasing at a and increasing linearly because i assume that current that is flowing through it is i1 or is is a current source so here is the equation c dvc1 by dt is equal to is capacitor vc1 is increasing or c1 is charging at the load side R2 I2 plus L2 di2 by dt plus V0 is equal to zero. Okay, and I2 is equal to same C dv0 by dt plus V0 by R. V0 by R. Now, how do I find out the average values? It's same. Integrate it over the cycle. integrated over the cycle only when the switch is on as well as switch is off okay and i'll get these two equations see here are the equations please i uh, just written integration actually we have to find the average values 1 over t is there 1 over t is there i have to find out the average values so definitely 1 over t time period has to be there so this is the equation for 0 to dt okay and this is the equation for the voltage equation mind you from d to t d to t okay so <coughs> if i add up both vdc i want rs is there l di by dt is there average 1 over t d t to t this capacitor volt term appearing only when the switch is opened okay this term average is zero okay zero similarly in this load side we have this sort of equation r2 i2 plus l2 di2 by dt average plus v not is equal to 1 over t 0 to dt vc1 dt okay and i2 current is this a constant i can represent it by a current source is c dv not by dt average plus v not by r this is a load side and at the input side this is the current 
how did I get there? Finding out these two values. This, this is the current waveform or this is the equation for the current when the switch is opened okay. and here at the load side equation for the current when the switch is opened. Similarly, we have here these are two equations. Okay. Combine them and you get them. Okay. So, at steady state inductor uh, the ripple at the input because if we have a VDC and a inductor we have at the output also I2 uh, current source at steady state ripple in both ripple in these two inductors should be the same peak to peak ripple should be the same. Similarly, in the output voltage Vc1 and output voltage V0 that is nothing but the voltage across the capacitor C2 okay, should be the same. So, we will get neglecting ripple and all this we will get these four equations Vdc is equal to I1 into Rs in min minus Dc1. So, if I neglect R1 see we have Vc1 is equal to Vdc divided by 1 minus D nothing but the boost converter transfer function boost converter transfer function this is a, a the secondary side or sorry the load side the load side secondary side I mean the load side R2 I2 plus V0 is equal to dvc1 if R2 is 0 V0 is equal to D into Vdc I told you that output stage is nothing but a buck converter with the forcing function of Vc1 forcing function is Vc1 I2 is a the average load load current I2 is the average current that is flowing through the inductor that is given by V0 by R okay? because average value of the current that is flowing through the capacitor C2 should be 0 mind you same whatever that I that we said for a buck converter there is inductor capacitor and R is always present even in cook converter L2 C2 and R is always present. Okay? So, average value of the inductor current should be equal to the average current of the load in, in, in buck as well as chuck converter for the load side because average current flowing through the capacitor should be 0 at steady state. Okay? So, I2 is the average value of the inductor current L2 should be equal to the average value of the load current and this is the another equation. So, again I'm solving these equations, these are the four equations that we get, okay. substitute for Vc1 in the equation representing Vdc, okay. see these are the equations that we are getting, Is in terms of Vdc and D, how did I get them? just by substituting from one variable in another. Okay. In the previous equation I had a VDC, I will substitute here and I will get this. So, Is in terms of VDC is given by this equation. Okay. VDC divided by R1 plus whole square into R2 plus R. Average value source current, Is is the source current in terms of the input voltage and the duty cycle and the duty cycle. Okay. Similarly, output voltage V0 in terms of VDC and the duty cycle D. V0 in terms of VDC into D. Same V0 is equal to I2 into R, I will substitute now. I know the relationship between I2 and Is, I will substitute here. This what will I get? this what I get, these are the equation okay. and here is the equation capacitor V C 1 in terms of V D C and this, this. So, if I make I 1 and R 1 if I neglect the resistances, neglect the resistances I will get just these equations. Okay. 
substitute for R1 and R2 and make them make R1 and R2 is equal to 0, substitute, simplify, you will get this equation. See here, Vc1 is equal to Vdc divided by 1 minus D, boost converter, and we have a buck, this is V0 and Vdc, a buck boost converter, buck boost converter, buck boost converter, okay. That is about the cook converter. We will draw the various waveforms tomorrow. Please, compared to uh, buck, buck boost and boost, they may look bit, the cook converter may look bit complicated, but it is very simple and, and it is very interesting circuit, very interesting circuit. Okay. You can derive the transfer function just by drawing the equivalent circuit when S is equal to on and S is equal to off. Buck and the boost operation. Okay. We'll more about it we'll see tomorrow. Thank you.